Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to wash my Honda B-Series in preparation for assembly. So we're gonna wash the block and all the other short block components and get them squeaky clean and ready to assemble because they've been measured and mocked up and cleaning is the next step before assembly. So on the table, there's some pretty basic tools. We have some Dawn dish soap. The block has already been through a hot tank or a hot spray wash at the machine shop, so there's no heavy particulate on it. It's just gonna be the contaminant that we've installed through transit or during measuring or mock-up, whatever small particulate we've got on the engine block, we need to get off because anything that is um, larger than your oil clearance, it could cause damage as it passes through the crank journal and the bearing face. So you wanna make sure everything's really, really clean. So we have some Dawn dish soap and some basic block brushes in different sizes. So you can kind of scrub through all the oil galleys and the bores and whatnot as you go. And then we have a electric air blower. And the reason why I'm using an air blower and not a conventional air compressor is in case your air compressor doesn't have an air dryer on it, your air compressor can collect water in it. And then you'll be blowing condensation or wet air onto oil free metal parts and you can cause uh, flash corrosion. So the block itself will be okay because it's aluminum, but under a microscope, you have to remember that your cylinder walls are a bunch of very small peaks and valleys and left wet and then unattended, you can get rust in those um, valleys and then the cylinder wall finish becomes altered. So we're going to wash the block. We're going to blow the heavy water off with a dry air source. And then we're gonna quickly get some WD-40 with some lint-free towels and wipe the bores out so we can displace all that water. It's water displacement 40. That's why it's WD-40. It's very good at displacing water. So we're gonna work quick. We're not gonna leave this engine wet and unattended because then it will corrode in the cylinder wall. So when it's time to do this part of your build, it's, I know you're just washing the block, but it's critically important. So you're gonna get through all these steps and get the block dry and the cylinder walls oiled as fast as possible. After we've got the block clean, dry, and the cylinder walls oiled, we can move to the crank and pistons and rods and bearings and all that other stuff. And we're gonna use a mineral spirits washer to clean those because mineral spirits is a good solvent to use to clean engine parts and it dries really well without really having to use much air to get that to dry because it just evaporates away. So kind of two stages, we'll do the block, we'll get the block oiled, we'll do all the other rotating parts, get them clean and dry and ready to be assembled and then we'll get to the fun part. You want to work with urgency on this because the rest of the block you can get dry over time but the bores are very sensitive to corrosion because of their um, landscape so you're just going to be very quick with the bores and um and make sure that they get all the water out of them because you could ruin the hone finish if you let it flash rust and then it's back to the machine shop
because we've just introduced uh, water to the bores, we need to work quickly. So we got the WD-40 on there. We wiped all the large water off. We took the blower and we blew the large amounts of water out, but there's gonna be water in bolt holes and things like that, but you're not gonna be concerned about that right at this minute. The bores are your main concern and your main responsibility to make sure that they don't have any rust happening in them. So we've WD-40 the bores and now we're gonna wipe the bores out with uh, ATF and some lint-free paper towels. And you're just gonna keep wiping and wiping and wiping until the towel just comes out red with ATF. You're cleaning that out of the valleys of the hone of the cylinders. So we've got the cylinder bores prepped and I just want to reiterate this is the super critical uh, part of cleaning the block because all those valleys are going to be the reservoirs or the places that the oil can collect in during the piston going up and down the bore. So all those valleys can hold oil and lubricate the piston, lubricate the rings and cool the piston and cool the rings and you need those valleys present. So one of the worst things you can do that you'll be responsible for during this assembly process is letting those cylinders get damaged by letting them corrode. So be quick in your effort, uh, put your phone away, don't accept any interruption during the process, just get the block cleaned and get the cylinders prepped in short order. You don't wanna waste any time there. But once you've got them wiped out and the paper towels coming out clean, you're not picking up any stuff out of those microscopic valleys, then it's time to take it easy again. So feverishly prep the bores and then you can let, you know, whatever water's in a bolt hole, you know, you can kind of work on that then, but you want to really, really, really focus on your, on your bores. If you're dealing with a cast iron block, it's a little bit more complicated because now everything that's machined is a surface that can get corrosion on it very quickly. So again, bores first, then everything else can come second, but you really want to do your best to protect the bores in this uh, process of the build. Now we're going to go through the process of washing all the internal engine parts. So first we're going to do the crank and that's kind of a specialty procedure that we have an older video that we can link to, but we'll go over the process of cleaning out all the oil galleys due to how a factory crank is drilled there's some dead end passages that you're gonna to wanna to clean out. So when the factory drills the oiling holes in these crankshafts, they drill straight through the journals like this. And then how they connect the main galley to the rod bearing is they drill a diagonal hole down through the center of the rod journal throw into the main galley. But that leaves this area right here deadheaded where particulate can accumulate over the length of the crank. So, if you have the means to pull these balls out, clean the galley and tap these balls for pipe plugs, that's not a bad way to do it. But the way that I'm going about it is a very do-it-yourselfer approach that I've done for years and it will work fine, but it takes some patience to get all of the particulate that's deadheaded in this part of the crank out. So you're gonna take a can of brake clean and you're gonna bend the end of the hose and you're gonna direct the end of the hose into that deadheaded galley and just wash it out. It's pretty gross, huh? This is just like when you're wiping the bores out on the block. You keep washing until it gets clean. If you're dealing with an aftermarket crank that is direct oiling, the crank cleaning is a very easy process, but any of these cranks that have the holes done this way makes the manufacturing process easier. And if you're dealing with a marginal strength part, 
It's a stronger part because the hole for the oil is right in the middle of the material and not off to one end like you would have with a direct oiling crank. So we've got the oil galleys cleaned out of the crankshaft. So we're gonna wash the crankshaft in the mineral spirits parts washer. We're gonna wash all the remaining of the parts of mineral spirits parts washer, and then we're just gonna let them dry. And we're gonna be um, aware that corrosion is still an issue. So things like the piston pins can flash rust, any cast iron or steel machine surface needs to be cared for throughout this process so it doesn't get corrosion on it. Very small amounts of corrosion can lead to big problems. So. You're, you're gonna work quickly just like you did with the bores, and you're gonna be aware that um, cleanliness is, is the best case scenario. So you'll never get it perfectly clean, neither will I. So we're just gonna do our best. We're gonna make sure that we're aware of our surroundings, we're aware of our workplace, we're not cleaning where we're grinding metal, we're not in a dirty area. We're just cleaning the parts and then getting them dry and getting them back into the clean room where we can have better control of our environment. Because I've filed the rings in sets per cylinder, I'm just rinsing them off in sets per cylinder. Um, during manufacturing, there could be stuff in the oil retainer ring or the spring rail. You just want to rinse all that stuff off and um, you'll give it a final wipe down before you put it in the engine. But you're going to keep them in order. You're not going to just throw all the rings in one pile. You, you wouldn't want to do that. I've got all the parts washed and now I'm gonna use compressed air from an air compressor that has an air dryer on it. So I don't have any water vapor coming out of this. It's just dry air. So I don't have to worry about impacting these parts heavily where they're gonna flash rust, but I'm still gonna care for them because you know, I'm down here in Florida, there's a lot of moisture in the air. I'm not gonna leave these parts out in the environment. I'm gonna get them dry and get them back into an air conditioned room where they're less likely to deal with condensation. Because the piston pins are also another component that can flash rust, we're going to start grabbing the piston pin by the ends only, and we're gonna coat it with some light oil like WD-40 to keep it from flash rusting between now and when it actually goes into the piston rod assembly. Now that we've got all these parts clean, dried and laid out, we're ready for assembly. So that'll be the next video that we post on this particular engine build. As far as how the process has gone to date, um, everything's gone pretty smooth, but it does take a lot of time. So allow yourself uninterrupted blocks of time to work on your engine with a good amount of focus so you can have a good outcome with a running engine that 
you don't have to work on moving forward because you've spent a lot of time and money to get to this step. If you don't have a mineral spirits parts washer, you can use cans of brake clean or if you're out at the racetrack making a repair, cans of brake clean will get you by. Just keep in mind that any particulate that's bigger than the clearances of the components is gonna cause damage as it passes through. So you wanna do the very best you can of getting all these surfaces and all the particulate clean, 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 ready to go together. If you're taking larger blocks of time between this step and say the actual assembly process, you have to keep in mind that corrosion is a problem. So if you're gonna put all these parts away and not touch them for another week, I would use some sort of light oil like WD-40 on the bare metal. I would store the components in air conditioning where the air should be a bit drier. Um, but you just wanna be mindful that best case scenario, you get everything clean, dry, and put it together right then. That'll give you your highest chance of success as far as keeping foreign material out of the engine. Hope you've enjoyed this video and see you next time. Thanks.